Hey everyone, so a lot of people ask me uh, how my suspension works, so I thought I'd make a video to show that. Um, I got a volunteer on the forklift here to, to lift the car up and down so I can show you a little bit of action. Um, I'll explain it first a little bit. So right off the lower control arm, everything's dirty and shitty from the end of the season last year, so forgive me for that. but. Right off the lower control arm, we have a rod end, and uh, it's, it goes up to this rocker here. And uh, it simply pivots right off here, this way. And uh, the suspension, uh, the coilover compress is there. It's really not too, too complicated, but a lot of people don't really see how it works. So I'll get uh, my volunteer here to lift the car up. And I'll, uh, and you can see how it works. Obviously, I have the spring off of the shock so it can compress. So that's fully, fully decompressed now. And then when it goes back down, you'll see it, you'll see it compress again. Now I got a block of wood under the under the lower control arm there to simulate a wheel, but I took it off so you could see the whole motion here. And it's gonna hit it in a second. And there you go. So this is simulating the wheel going up when the car hits a bump. And there's a few advantages of this system. So obviously you can see the difference between the distance from the pivot to this push rod mount and the pivot to the coilover mount. Uh, it's a two to one ratio. So when this moves one inch here, this side moves two inches here. Um, now because of the angle that the push rod is on, it's not actually one to two. So it's not when the wheel moves up an inch, the shock compresses an inch. Uh, it turns out to be about uh, one and five eighths to one ratio. So the shock and the spring have a one and five eighths um, advantage over the push rod there. So every time my wheel moves up one inch, the shock compresses an inch and five eighths. So what that does is if you have a hundred pound spring rate, let's say, in order for the wheel to move an inch, you'd have to have 162 pounds of force. So that automatically allows you to have stiffer springs or stiffer suspension. And then that helps you out there if you need really stiff suspension like I do. Um, another benefit of this system is if you don't have space, you can, uh, you can do this. Like I, I don't have too, too much room. I obviously, I could have run a regular Corvette coilover because I have all Corvette suspension, but I like the look of this better and it gets everything into the, the center of the car more. So you have a better center of gravity. So there's a few advantages. Also you get to with, with the different ratio on the rocker there. You get to use more of the shock, which is just better. Um, and then, like I have, I have barely any travel at all. So if I didn't have, if I didn't have the ratio there, then I'd really not use too much spring at all. So this way, it's a lot better. But I have a, I have a similar setup in the rear of my car. It's a little bit different, but really the same. Just a few different angles and stuff on the pivots down there, but it's still a two to one. And uh, yeah, I really mainly did it because it looks pretty cool and I just wanted to try to do something different. But I like the way it turned out. And yeah, that's a push rod cantilever suspension. Explained a little bit.